Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about how to deploy uh, an OpenStack cluster within 10 minutes. Um, I, I'm, uh, my name is Nitin Madhok and uh, I work for uh, Clemson University as a systems developer and programmer. Uh, I am also one of the uh, top four contributors to the SolStack open source projects. So here's what the agenda looks like. Uh, we're going, going to talk about the project Salt OpenStack or Salt to OpenStack. How does it work? Um, if you if you've heard about Salt, if you've used it, uh, then you might know what grains and pillars are. So we're going to set those manually, sync the pillar data, uh, passwords. Uh, we're going to execute the Salt state run to actually perform the installation. And then in the end, I'm going to show a recorded demo uh, since I couldn't use my own laptop, so uh, we'll just have to do with the re recording. So what's salt OpenStack? It's basically a salt formula or a set of salt states uh, to deploy a minimal OpenStack. So uh, you can get a working cluster. It won't have a, a volume and a heat and other features in it, but uh, they can be installed using the formula later. Multiple OpenStack clusters can be deployed in parallel. So um, one thing I noticed when, 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 when I wanted to deploy OpenStack clusters was I deployed one and then messed up. And then instead of fixing it uh, or spending the time to fix it, it was easier to redeploy another cluster within 10 minutes. So um, it's also useful for finding the ideal OpenStack configuration, which be best fits your company. So in our case, we, uh, we had to. Um, get the right configuration. So just using Puppet, Puppet or Chef or Ansible or, or uh, those products uh, out of the box, Packstack, DevStack, didn't work for us. Uh, so we had to come up with this. That's the link to the repository. So here's how it works. Uh, we've got the OpenStack nodes uh, that can be configured based on the salt grains. Grains is just more like static data that you assign to the to the nodes. Salt must be installed on all the all the OpenStack nodes. Then appropriate packages and services can be installed and configured based on the grain uh, OpenStack uh, role. So you can basically assign roles to your uh, nodes. If it's an all-in-one, you can you can give it all the roles. You want dashboard in it. You want the compute services. You want the controller services, the network, everything on one. If you want them separately, then you can have one VM per role. OpenStack clusters can be identified easily based on the grain called OpenStack cluster. Uh, that's basically the name of the cluster. It's easy if you have like if you deploy ten clusters in parallel at a time. Uh, it'll make things easier to identify them. Passwords for various services are are securely passed to the to the nodes uh, in the form of salt pillars. They're encrypted, so uh, the passwords are safe. So here's how you set the grain data manually. For the controller, you just specify the command salt and then specify your targets. If you have like one controller, two controllers for HA, you can you can specify both of them there and then set the value for for the cluster, the role, and the network interface to use for the management uh, network. So on the compute side, you'll notice that you also specify the tunnel and the external interfaces. And then you can have the dashboard on the controller, or you can have dash like two dashboards, both in, in an HA setup. So you can uh, use these commands. In the end, you can verify if the grain data has been successfully set. We're going to see that in the demo, um, how to check that. But basically, I'm targeting using the, using the grain that was set. So I'm doing OpenStack colon cluster colon, and then the name of my cluster, which is dev underscore cluster. The next thing is to sync the pillar data. So basically, we want the passwords to be synced to all the OpenStack nodes. Uh, there are certain passwords that should only exist on the on the controller, and the compute nodes don't need to know about it. So there's no point passing the, the passwords to all the nodes. Only the nodes that need data to a specific, uh, need access to a specific set of data will have them. So we clone the pillar folder structure from the repository uh, under serve pillar folder. 
We make sure that the folder name matches the, the name of the cluster. And then we, we change the passwords according to our needs. Uh, the file basically has default password, so uh, if you're using it for testing or deploying a production cluster, I suggest changing the passwords. Uh, then you basically run this command to refresh the pillar data, uh, and then you verify that all of them have the correct pillars. Now that the data has been passed, you just need to execute the state run. So uh, that's the link to where the state files are. Um, we're going to first run a test run using test equals true to make sure everything looks good. Uh, it's going to show you the changes that it's going to make on the server without actually making them. So uh, it's pretty handy. And then in the, in the end, we're going to uh, actually perform the run. So, so in this case, um, I'm using Salt Cloud, which is uh, used to orchestrate VMs. Uh, first, I deployed VMs in our VMware infrastructure. Uh, we also have OpenStack infrastructure, but um, you can use Salt Cloud to deploy OpenStack VMs or or just VMs on any. Uh, public or private cloud provider. So in this case, uh, I'm using the VMware short cloud driver, uh, which I wrote about uh, a few months ago. So we are deploying four VMs here, one controller and th three compute nodes. I'm going to fast forward it a little. So it takes about five minutes to deploy uh, these four VMs in parallel. And you can deploy multiple uh, clustered VMs at once and test different settings on them or see if you can reproduce the same settings. So now that the VMs have been deployed, we're going, we, we're going to check the grains and the pillar data. In this case, I don't have to set the pillar and the grains manually because I built them using Salt Cloud. So all the grains are automatically synced. So I'm targeting the cluster name called dev underscore cluster, trying to ping it first, see if they can be reached. And then I'm going to get the OpenStack grain. So all the nodes have the correct grains. Next I'm going to check if they have the correct pillars. So if you notice, after, after we run this command, the compute node only gets the password it needs, but the controller gets much more passwords, uh, such as the database passwords, because the My MySQL is on the controller. Next, we're actually going to perform a test equals true run. Um, run the state. And, and make sure everything looks good. Uh, usually the test, uh, test run comes back within two or three minutes. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I recommend running a test run just to make sure everything's fine. So you'll see a couple of failures, but they're only related to the services. So since it's a test equals true run, uh, what it's doing is it's actually trying to perform the complete run, but the packages are not yet installed. They are going to be installed in the actual installation. So you can safely ignore those uh, errors in the test true run. And then I'm basically running the same command with test equals false. Um, so this command usually takes uh, seven to eight minutes, uh, and you, you'll have your OpenStack cluster within, within that time. So in this case, one thing failed. Uh, 
what will fail is uh, the IP tables um, state. Uh, you can ignore that as well. You can also uh, destroy the same cluster um, and rebuild it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ignore the destroying part. So here we're basically, we now have the cluster installed. Uh, we're going to log in using the admin and the password we specified and passed to it as a pillar. So there you go. Uh, we have all the three hypervisors we built in there. Uh, right now, it'll, it won't have any instances. For the images, uh, by default, uh, I upload the Cerros image. You can specify more images that you want in there by default. And you can also specify and create networks by default, so you don't have to manually create them. In this case, I'm going to create a test network myself, and then I'm going to deploy three VMs. So SALT, SALT basically makes it easier to deploy and manage multiple, uh, multiple VMs, having different OS, having different uh, versions. So Debian, and then you've got Red Hat, Oracle Linux, and then you've got Oracle Linux 5, Red Hat 6, and then 7, and then you've ha you have different versions of OpenStack. So you have uh, ISOs, you have Juno, Kilo. So this makes it easier to manage all of that. So I deploy the first VM. And again, you don't have to do this manually. Uh, using the formula, you can, you can automate that process. So if you want a cluster to come up, having a set of default images, networks, and VMs, just build it out. It'll have the default VMs. Uh, and then you can just go ahead and test connectivity between VMs and between networks and see if everything's fine. So we see the, the, the VM was deployed. We see more information about them. We've got two VMs that have been spun up. One is still in process of spawning. Right. So if you have any questions, you can email me. Uh, you can also follow me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and GitHub. Uh, I'm also active, active on IRC. So thank you.